Multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A, or MEN2A for short, is a rare genetic disorder which affects the endocrine glands. These glands produce hormones that regulate metabolism, growth and development. MEN2A causes more than one gland of the body's endocrine system to develop tumours that can make extra hormones that in turn can cause a variety of symptoms. The three areas where these tumours grow are the thyroid gland in the neck, the parathyroid glands that lie close to or within the thyroid, and in the adrenal glands just above each kidney. A diagnosis of a rare lifelong condition like MEN2A can come as a shock. Liz was diagnosed with MEN2A after being referred for tests because her calcium levels were high. Well, I was diagnosed with MEN2A in September 2019. Prior to getting my actual formal diagnosis, I'd been diagnosed with having hypercalcemia, um, which was related to a parathyroid issue, which they picked up through my GP. And my symptoms for that were irritability, um, just generally feeling unwell and incredibly tired. So I would sit down and the next thing I know I'd be falling asleep after work, which wasn't really like me. Following on from the hypercalcemia, I was um, subsequently referred to have genetic testing, which is when they diagnosed me with the MEN2A. The rarity of MEN2A with its common symptoms such as tiredness and fatigue can make a diagnosis difficult. This can mean those affected remain undiagnosed for many years. For Laura, her diagnosis eventually came after multiple heart attacks and brain hemorrhages caused by the excess hormones made by an adrenal tumour. Everything started in 1999 and I was diagnosed in 2006. So that was the period of time when I had all these various things happen. Having had the heart attacks and the brain hemorrhages, uh, people just kept saying to me, oh, you're unlucky, but then still didn't tell me what I had, no one knew. And so it was really frightening um, because I, was, I was, got to a point where I was frightened to have a headache in case I had a brain hemorrhage. When I had the last heart attack, they did a scan um, on my adrenals and then they found that I had this you know, mass on there. And they kept me in, in hospital for quite a long time because they had to give me drugs to suppress it. Um, so it was really frightening. And the thoughts of, will my children have this? MEN2A is a hereditary disorder and a diagnosis of a related tumour will lead to genetic testing. Many people, like Mandy, discover they have MEN2A after another member of the family is diagnosed. So I was diagnosed when I was 21 years old. I was at university and I got a call from South Africa from my cousin and she had been pregnant and they'd given her a general health check and found that she had a lump in her neck. So they, they followed it up and unbelievably her doctor had heard of MEN2A and she was told to call everybody in the whole family. And I went to the local hospital, was scanned and there was a centimetre tumour in the thyroid at that time. Um, so after that I was then sent to a hospital in London where I had the genetic screening and I did have the MEN2A. Being the first person to have the diagnosis and dealing with that was worrying. I guess what I had no idea about was how life-changing it might be for me and for other people in my family. In terms of the people that have been affected, obviously myself, my brother, his three children, my younger son, I have two children, it's my younger son that's been affected, and then my two paternal cousins. I feel like there's a cloud over my head all the time. I felt very guilty uh, as a mum that I'd given it to my children. I then had to contact my brother and three of his out of the six have got it, my cousin had it and my aunt. So in consequence of me getting it and my diagnosis, um, 
the whole family were affected by it terribly. And we've had children born since into the family. Um, we've had three more that have it. And my granddaughter has it, which is horrible. So thankfully they diagnosed it. Because I don't know what would have happened if they hadn't have diagnosed it then. Early diagnosis improves the outcomes for people with MEN2A. Whilst most tumours associated with the condition are benign, tumours in the thyroid gland will lead to medullary thyroid cancer. Almost all people with MEN2A will develop medullary thyroid cancer unless they had a prophylactic thyroidectomy in childhood. So one of the things obviously I read which stood out was the prospect of being diagnosed with medullary thyroid cancer as a result of having the defective gene, which obviously worried me immensely. However, reading through the literature that Amend had sent me, I started to feel a little bit calmer when I realised that this can be eradicated if the thyroid is removed. So I felt reassured reading that information. I was shocked to find out I had cancer and when I found out I had the gene, obviously you have the fear, the initial fear of this is quite a big lifetime condition to live with. Um, but for me it was other people's reaction that was almost harder to deal with. You know, this young 21 year old girl at uni has got this cancer that she's got to have surgery for. Um, but for me it was shocking but I could deal with it. <laughs> 